How little men know. Yup. Hey, welcome to the Halloween episode of the Game Dungeon. Yeah, tonight we're looking at Hellgate London. You know, hell is always an easy sell for a Halloween episode. But I wasn't sure if I felt up to going to hell again. So this year, hell is coming to us. Perfect. And it kicks things off with a big budget 7 minute CGI intro. Okay, the first part is just a book and you'd think I'm talking over important backstory, but it really is just there was light and then there was darkness, but then the darkness got powerful. But the people of Earth are holding out. Seriously, a six-year-old could have written this part. Believe me, I am hungry for some hell lore. So I'll let you know if there's something juicy. Well, it's not all narrative written on the back of a napkin. We get a convoy rushing through some ruins, and a Templar is telling his passengers that he and his other Templars have to assault the Hellgate as a diversion, so the refugees can get to the hideout. And this lady's like, no, don't do it! But I have to! Yeah, I've seen this sort of thing a thousand times. And I can't get over how much this Templar looks like an actor I've seen in a bunch of movies. But I had to look up his name. Bruce McGill. Yeah, he looks like a more fit version of Bruce McGill. That's not his voice though. Plus, he's American. This is Hellgate, London. We've got to get somebody British. And the demon attacks. Ah! Now they're making a big deal about his granddaughter Jessica. Like she's more important than everyone else here. No idea why. I feel like I'm missing a chunk of the story here, but we'll keep watching. Okay, there's an occult chick, the demons attack, ah! and the girl gets to safety. Gotta have some heroic sacrifices, then flash forward and now she's a Templar, and that's it. Okay, I realize the game hasn't even started, but there's something bugging me already. Mainly, we're getting almost no story. Now an opening cinematic can sometimes be just to look cool. Well, what if we start a new game? Spoiler, nothing. No intro or anything. Fine, well what about the manual? That's it? Two paragraphs? Well, it's 2038, that's good to know. And the rest was shown in the intro. Now not every game needs a story, but we're getting this lush, expensive, seven minute long cinematic that might have taken millions to produce and then you're giving me table scraps for story. It's already primed my brain to expect more. I mean, if the game doesn't want to have a story, fine, but then why spend so much money and effort making me think it has one? Oh, this was published by EA, okay. Now, there might be more of a story, but I can't find it. Although there's something interesting if we go online to a wiki. This game takes place in 2038, and it's been a war that's been going on for 18 years. Can you do the math? It's already October, that means hell on earth is due any day now. Wow, this is perfect. I didn't plan for this at all. Now there's actually more bug in me, but let's get started. Oh, and it's worth mentioning, I need to specify which version of Hellgate London I'm playing. This was released in 2007. The multiplayer died in 2009, but the single player still works. And since then, I honestly don't know what happened. Thankfully, a volunteer helped sort this out for me, or try to. I still don't understand it, but here you go. This is a zombie of a game that keeps dying and coming back to life. Now, I was considering playing one of the newer ones that came out with Hellgate Tokyo, but there were a lot of comments on how the game locks up and is unplayable with a one frame per second bug. Oh, hell no. So I'm going with the original. And now it's time for the most important decision of my life. I mean the game. What class do I play as? Now full disclosure, I have played this game before, but I didn't finish it. I played the marksman because I thought I'll shoot stuff, bang bang. Now I did get to shoot things, but uh, things happened. I'll talk about that later. So I never got out of hell. Maybe I never left. Maybe I'm in hell right now. Well, if I have to go back into hell, this time I want some help. So that means I'm going in as a summoner. Make hell work for me. So let's do it. Sammy the summoner, go. And here we are. Okay, a tutorial. Incoming video transmission. Oh, video message in air quotes, huh? 
You know, it's kind of distracting having big text flashing in the center of the screen while they want you to read another message at the same time. Okay, this guy studied the demon world. Come find him. Yeah, yeah, let's go. You know, I thought I might need a tutorial since I've forgotten a lot, but this just doesn't quit. Yeah, a lot of this is common sense stuff. I think this was a mistake. Is there an option to turn this off? Oh my god, it's showing up on top of the options menu. No, I don't think I can turn it off. Wow. On another note, I'm not necessarily blaming the game for this. It could be on my end, but the mouse tracking is really bad. Now, I'm usually pretty forgiving about that sort of thing. I know some people will flip if tracking has a 0.1% acceleration or something, but this is definitely noticeable. It feels like the sensor is dirty and is stuttering on my movements. Like, you notice how it sort of jumps a little bit? I'm moving my mouse steadily the entire time. It seems to work fine in the actual menu. I have no idea what's happening, but it feels like I have sand in my mouse. I guess it's just as well I'm playing a summoner. My minions can do the aiming for me. Okay, I found the guy and the tutorial is still what going. You Did you make? Yeah, everybody loves reading two things at once, right? This is relentless. I really can't turn this off? It's been going for four or five minutes now. Okay, screw it. New character. Sammy the Summoner is dead. Long live Sammy the Summoner. Yeah, this time we're turning that off. Oh no. No, I turned that off! Are you serious? Wow, what a great start to the game. Maybe it'll eventually play itself out. Well, visually, I'd say we have a good first impression otherwise. I mean, normally modern ruins are pretty ugly. But the fog, lava pustules, and demons roaming around keep it interesting. Yeah, I like the statue there. The more little touches, the better. Okay, here's the end of the first zone. I've made it to the end of the level and the tutorial is still going. Maybe it'll stop in the next one. Wow, it's staying on top of the loading screen. Okay, uncle, I'll open the skills window. Oh no. The tutorial is not appeased. I can't turn it off. Okay, this is a competitive field, but this might be the worst tutorial I've ever seen. Oh good, the location text overrode the tutorial text. And it faded. We did it, guys. We got through the tutorial. Well, I talked to Murmur here. He says a lot of nothing, and it's one line at a time, and I have to keep pressing the button. No voice acting for the actual dialogue. I realize that's the standard of World of Warcraft, but we can't have spoken text in a big EA published game like this? A single player one? Guess not. Okay, I talked to this guy. This is kind of distracting having- Whoa! Did you see that? His animation finished, but there was no transition. He instantly goes back to the start of the animation. As someone who's done a lot of animation work before, this is the last thing I want to see. It's just so jarring. Actually, Murmur was doing it too. I just didn't notice because I was so relieved the tutorial was over. Plus, this is driving me crazy a little bit because the game wants me to focus here. So let's have a guy taking up most of the damn screen, waving his arms around and twitching into place here. Not a good impression, guys. It doesn't help that the writing's feeling a bit... <sighs> I'm not sure how to explain it. Let's just say it's not great. We'll see. We're given some quests and it's very MMO-ish. Get eight capacitors, kill ten zombies, oh, no. eh, whatever. I will adequately equip you for your adventures. Let's just go. Okay, goodbye. So the first real level looks like just maintenance rooms and hallways to a building. This is way less impressive than the ruins we saw earlier. This honestly feels like filler and we just started. Demons are kicking my ass, but I'm level one so I can't really complain. Aha! Level 2! The tables have turned! Yeah, it's kind of slow going, but part of many RPGs is building a more powerful character, so we'll hang with it. At least some people online were saying positive things about the summoners, so we're fueled by hope. Now, it's worth mentioning these levels are mostly procedurally generated, like Diablo. See, check it out. If we start a new game, it's a little different each time. In fact, I've heard many of the developers of Diablo 1 and 2 worked on this, though I didn't bother tracking down exactly who. This is certainly cool as a concept, but this environment feels like a waste for it. 
Oh, and it's worth mentioning that this game came out for both DirectX 9 and 10. Now, there used to be a good article showing a comparison between the two for this game, but it's vanished off the internet. Seriously, the screenshots aren't even on the internet archive, so I'm not sure what we're missing. I did a quick check, and I noticed everything is darker for some reason. The smoke doesn't clip against the wall in 10, but it also looks like cotton candy. And the DirectX 10 version takes about 30 seconds to start, whereas 9 loads instantly. Go figure. Well, I pick up my capacitors, kill every enemy, walk to the end of the corridors, and that's it. It just sort of ends. I guess I'm walking back out. Now, you can warp out with devices, but we've just started. Gotta conserve our palladium. Actually, palladium's insanely expensive. At the time of this video, one ounce is over $2,000, and that's before our economy completely collapses. So really, our character is already old world rich. But that doesn't mean much in 2038, so we better keep looting. I turn my capacitors in, he says thanks, I get some money and experience, and that's pretty much it. This is super MMO boilerplate questing. You know, I'm not against this, but I guess I'm a bit jaded, and this sort of thing doesn't inspire me at all. This might be heresy to some, but I've never really liked the standard NPC quest format, where you talk to them, they tell you to do something, you do it, then come back, then they give you something. It just feels so robotic and rigid. It's all about context. Like, if I came back with my eight capacitors, and he started shouting, then people stopped what they were doing, then a small crowd gathered around me, thanking me and cheering, it would be different. I kind of want to feel like if I'm doing a quest for someone, they give a damn? And on that note, time to go kill ten zombies. This one is outside and looks a lot better. Man, look at how many hits this bastard takes, and we've barely started. This could be a long game. The creature design is awesome, though. There's a lot of good art direction in this. Hey, I've seen some hells on Earth in my time, and I feel like this one is doing it justice. Hell yeah. Well, I returned to get my reward, and he has another quest for me. Now he wants me to kill three blood zombies. Fine. But wait, wait, wait. He wants me to do that in the Holborn access shafts. That's where I just was. The maintenance hallways. And when I played that, I cleared out every last enemy. I saw it all. Now, of course, there are enemies there now because this game likes to respawn enemies after you let the zone reset. But what the hell? The game let me choose whether I take the left tunnel or the right tunnel. And I had missions for both. I thought it was all the same. But now I'm seeing if I had taken the left tunnel first, then the right tunnel could have done double duty on the quest. That means there was an intended order, but they didn't tell me that. I may have seen this before, but it's rare. Designing a game that gives you freedom of choice, even though there's an intended path that benefits you, but then not tell the player there's an intended path. I mean, I guess clans kind of did that, but that was just there to kill you. This feels more like bad design. Well, I'm passing on this quest. I did not find the maintenance hall so riveting, I feel excited to do them all over again. Let's keep going. Well, I have some loot, but it's honestly so exotic, I don't know where it goes. Not here. Not here. Huh. Clicking on its description doesn't really help. It gives me a quote from Einstein, which doesn't really seem related. In fact, I'm learning all my items have quotes, including other great minds such as Britney Spears. From here, I head into the subway. I'm getting more and more minions. This is good. I like the direction this is heading. I am kind of hating my weapon, though. It's slow to fire and has a delayed charge, and the mouse aiming in this game doesn't help. I'm hoping to buff up my minions more so they can pick up the slack. We make it to a new hub and lots of people to talk to. Okay, I think I see more of what the writing is doing. It's not simple, but it's all kind of bad. See, I'm at a disadvantage where I recognize some of what I'm seeing, but I'm not fully conscious of nor have the background to really spell it all out. I think someone like an English literature teacher or a book reviewer might be able to tear this writing apart like a ravenous wolf. But you're stuck with me, so I'll try and fumble through this. Okay, first we have the painfully dry writing. Look, here's Murmur, the demonology expert we rescued off the streets who just magically shows up in this hub also. What words of wisdom do you have to convey upon us now that we've had our first trek across hell-ravaged London? We made it. Next. 
Now we just have to deliver the message. Yeah, we knew that. Next. We know this information is vital. Yeah, we knew that. Next. We also know the guy who gave it to us wanted us to deliver it before he died. Yeah, we knew that. He told us. Next. So let's do it. The end. I will see you. Here's a yes. guard. You won't find trouble here. Trouble us, you trouble the guy in charge. Nobody crosses him more than once. Here's TechSmith22. Yes. I feel bad for the people at the last station. They're barely hanging on. Hanging on until they don't. Better them than me. I'm glad I'm a TechSmith here. And here's the big cheese himself. The guy in charge of these particular tunnels. And he throws a dot 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 response at me. That is so weak, guys. And look at this animation. He looks like he's picking something out of my hair over and over. And here's a medic. For some reason, she's the only person who doesn't say anything and we just get a raw character description. Like these are script notes or something. Now there's more bad writing, there's more of it. But I can only take so much at a time. It's like they're cardboard cutouts. Just stop. It's just messing with my head. Moving on. Okay, the next level is... Wait, these are the maintenance hallways. We already did this. Seriously, these are exactly the same. It's just a procedurally generated remix. They were so good the first time, we're bringing them back by popular demand, huh? Okay, well, I have a new gun that's actually more fun to use. Though I should enjoy it while it lasts, because my stats probably won't keep up to use a gun like this and buff my minions. There's a bunch of quests waiting for me back at base. Go kill 16 imp troopers, yeah! Hello! Hi there! Welcome. My pee, it goes in like nine directions. So this game has voice actors, and they sound decent. They just gave them three lines that didn't read any dialogue. Yes, yes, you're a man. Wonderful. A man. Math is hard, let's shop. What? Back out on the streets again. I'm pretty sure this is another repeat, although that's okay because I kind of wanted to see more of the streets. I have two weapons now. They really just feel like the blaster from Quake 2. You know, your starter weapon that you immediately want to switch from? They're not satisfying to use at all. But then I picked the wrong class for satisfying weapons. Gonna need my minions to step up to the plate. I friggin' love this. The weird floating hell blimp monster things. Are they benign? What do they eat? I would not mind learning some hell biology. I hope we get to ride one by the end of the game. Whoa, did you see that? That jumper just straight up disappeared on me. Boy, I'm glad I came up with that term gamer dementia. It feels like I need it every episode now. If it wasn't on video, I might have thought I imagined it. Oh, here we go. Hell rift time. This is what I signed on for. Whoa! Yes, this is good. This is just what I want to see going through a hell rift. Blood red sky, more of the floating things. I guess the presence of demons is undercut by the fact that they've invaded Earth, but this is solid. Oh my god, look at how little damage I'm doing to this guy. This is gonna take a while. Indeed it does. He killed all my minions and is coming for me. Back through the rift. He doesn't follow me. Time to recharge. Oh yeah, I have to point this out. I noticed this earlier. When you summon your main attack minion, it takes three seconds and locks you into place. Completely vulnerable. That's an understandable trade-off. Now after you spawn him, there's 20 seconds before you can spawn him again. That's also reasonable. But if he dies, or if you dismiss him, you also have to wait another 20 seconds before you can spawn him again. So say he's low on health. You can't just respawn. You have to dismiss him, wait 20 seconds, then respawn. It's a double cooldown. So you really want to keep him alive when you can. This might be the first action RPG I've seen handle minions this way. Okay, back to hell. Damn, he takes a while. Killed all my fire minions and almost killed my demon again. Nice. Check out the skull engravings on the tiles. Huh, we have kind of a Gaelic pentagram going on here. Or maybe those are snakes. See, I wasn't kidding. I want my hell lore. Who or what built this? Why? Did they build this just because it looks rad? Maybe. Okay, as much as I would like to believe otherwise, I think the story just doesn't matter. It's mostly dry instructions, 
Offhand references to things that aren't explained? Weak drama? It feels like a bad TV show on the Sci-Fi Channel, but that would be IF we had good presentation. But we're not even getting that. I'm getting dolls whose lips don't move twitching in place. I guess if the developers didn't care, why bother with talking to all these NPCs at all then? It just drags the game down. If I saw all this in some unknown indie game, this would be a huge turnoff, and I would be praying the game has some redeeming value. Like amazing gameplay. Well, let's have some more of that. Next up is a sewer level. Of course there's a sewer level. And my new weapon keeps freaking out. Look at it twitching. God. It resets if I shoot it, but it keeps happening. And yeah, it's a sewer level. It goes on and on and on. Oh, I see. These were just the upper sewers. Yeah, more sewers. Wow. I think we got our fill. Back at base. Yeah, these are upgrades I like to see. Okay, honestly, I don't like having to fiddle with gear that has borderline better stats. But yeah, 8 shields compared to 53? That's the kind of jump I like to see. I'd rather see almost no loot, but when I do find it, have it really count for something like this. Oh my god, the maintenance tunnels again? Going for three, huh guys? Since it was so good the other two times around? This reeks of padding, but this is a long game. Why pad a long game? But back to loot, I noticed this in Diablo 2 and thought it was terrible. Okay, in Diablo 1, you had your basic character class, but any class could use any item if they had the stats for it. So a wizard with an axe? Yeah, why not? But in Diablo 2, you would specifically come across items that were for another class. Now I understand that for multiplayer, but for single player, this got kind of irritating. The game knows what class you're playing. There's no reason to drop stuff you literally cannot use. Well, we're getting that here too. And yeah, yeah, you can share it between stashes, but it just increases the busy work. I hated that. Getting a little tired of these maintenance tunnels, too. You have performed adequately. The threat to our experiments has been neutralized and your advancement has been secured. Oh, they did it again! Look, he's giving me a quest for an area I already cleared. I picked the wrong order again. This is just stupid. Oh, sure, I'd love to go back and check out the maintenance tunnels again. Have any excuses for me to go back there? Me and my big mouth. Yeah, what you're looking at now are not the same maintenance tunnels from before. This is a completely different set of maintenance tunnels. This is no good. I mean, part of me appreciates the abstract image of maintenance tunnels that never end, but we've had enough. You can stop now. Oh God, a new level, thank you. It's the museum. This is actually kind of a basic map, but I'm just so happy to have something new. And I'm amazed these statues are not coming to life, because that seems like exactly something they would do. Well, since we're in the museum getting cultured, let's talk about the music. It's often buried under the sound of the game itself, but I would describe it as half generic movie soundtrack and half more interesting ideas. Like this is pretty forgettable. Okay, now this has something going on. But then they cheapen it with the orchestra and now it's weak again. I think some of the strongest material are the quiet parts of some tracks where they're not afraid to break away from the orchestra and you have these moments of reflection. Overall, the music works, but kind of like the game, I'm seeing more potential here than what we got. Hell Rift time, oh yeah. Oh, this looks exactly like the other one. There's barely any changes at all. I'm starting to get a bad feeling. Oh, there's a flesh mouth thing, that's new. Ah, it activated the bomb, run. Oh, now they come to life. Yeah, I mean, come on. Down with Emperor Golkar. Emperor of, uh... Oh, what's this? Speak with the sage. Clever coming to me. Yes. Yes, I can see why. What? 
Stars fell, and I wept. The void returned, and I wept. Midnight spread, and I wept. I wept and wept. Yeah, you get the idea. This lady's talking mostly nonsense. She makes her library look nice again. Woe is to the dark, for knowledge is light, and light shines still. Yeah, some more real deep writing here. A cinematic! To uncover nonsense is frustrating. Yes, it is! To know, to feel importance without real understanding, that is maddening. What? And yet it was precisely then, amid so much frustrated bewilderment, that man first heard the fabled and near incomprehensible voice of truth. You too, huh? Okay, this is all garbage. You're trying to act deep. You're not. I'm leaving. Congratulations, end of act one. Uh, I'm not sure congratulations are in order. Should I even be doing these quests? I forgot what I'm supposed to do with the possessed pickle jar. And I just realized this guy's a reference to the McKenzie brothers. But they're so much better than this. This is the real sacrilege here. I'm watching mannequins flop around. This is not life. Oh, good, good! The subway. Haven't seen that one yet, though my gun is pretty cool now. I feel like this is one of those moments where somebody asks you where you see yourself in 10 years, and if I knew the answer was in an endless subway blasting demons with the lava hose trying to keep my shit together, I wouldn't have guessed that, but I believe it. Actually, I should stop using the lava hose. It's gonna get me killed. And the subway has merged into the maintenance tunnels. Oh, we're really spicing things up now. When you're tired of maintenance tunnels, you're tired of life. Oh, round two, another subway. You know, a subway level is fine, but you've seen one subway, you've kind of seen them all. Now, the lack of lighting in a subway can make it really spooky, but these are well lit, which I actually appreciate, but it means it feels like we're just going down a long subway. Eh. Now is a good time to mention the other thing that was bugging me in the intro. See, the problem is it was setting off my stupid meter. Okay, hell comes to Earth. Cool. Humanity has been devastated and only handfuls of survivors are left. Got it. And we have high-tech neon Templar armor and are fighting with swords. Okay, now we have a problem. Because now the setting's not abiding by its own rules. I mean, first, why the hell are we using swords when we have high-caliber weapons? C4? Bombs? Artillery? I mean, there's a reason soldiers stop using swords. Because swords can't kill the enemy 500 yards away or more, or take out an armored installation, or battleships, planes. Now if the game wanted to, they could say, okay, we need swords because conventional weapons don't work on demons. They have to be blessed by a priest. Hey, Warhammer 40k handles this problem by making swords a huge cultural symbol. In their world, not having swords would be like telling troops not to wear a uniform. They're still not that practical, but humanity doing things that aren't practical but carry a long cultural tradition is totally realistic. So those are explanations that still make sense. But not only does Hellgate say nothing about that, but look, their gear looks like it's in pretty good shape. This cutscene takes place in a month or two, I guess, in 2020. So when exactly do we have time to manufacture Neon Templar armor? We wouldn't have known to make this before the invasion, and our industry would have been destroyed after. All we would have would be junkyard manufacturing and whatever we have left of the old world. We wouldn't have all this nice new industrial produced polished gear specifically for demon fighting. Now I get it, if a game wants an excuse to have future paladins fighting demons because it looks cool, fine. But then don't try to get me to take your game seriously, talking about the importance of the child, and the heroic sacrifice, and all these key and dramatic moments. It's just stupid then. It's all stupid. Either we're having dumb fun so we don't need to explain anything, or you want people to take your fantasy world seriously and have to think things through. You've got to pick one. You go for both and it gets stupid. And round three of the subway, good God. Three in a row, by the way. We've seen this more than three times by now. Now, I'm not against long levels. In fact, I'm fine with even really long levels. But you've got to make them worth looking at. This is just a subway tunnel. I feel like I'm doing laps. Whoa, what was that? Did you see that? I just warped back to the start of the level. Was that an enemy ability? Wouldn't that be a crappy mechanic? Let's check the slow motion. 
I was just fighting a bunch of zombies. No, that seemed to come out of nowhere. Okay, this was meant to be a multiplayer game also. Did I lag out of my own game in single player completely offline? That's the only answer I'm coming up with. Wow. I actually freaked out and thought it happened again later, but it turns out that was just a new tunnel that looked almost exactly the same, so it was just deja vu. Oh, thank God, no more subway. I've had enough, I've had enough. But now I'm confused. I thought I was gonna upgrade my weapons, but I can't equip anything. Now you can't equip them if you don't have the stats, but this one's willpower. I have willpower into next week. What the hell? Wait, am I missing my hand? Is that on purpose? All right, I restarted the whole game and that did the trick. It works now. Well, this game was made for Windows. More garbage quests, shut up, I hate you. Back on the streets again. I've seen this already. It's the same damn thing. Though you know what? It's not a maintenance tunnel or subway. But touching back on my weapons earlier, the game actually has loads of crafting options for it and then floods my inventory with all this esoteric crap to change my item stats a little bit. There are blueprints for assembling other weapons, which so far are worse than my current ones, and an upgrade station, which costs a crap load to perform. I'm not really incentivized to use this though, because one, this takes up a lot of time and inventory to put up with, and two, I'm playing through the campaign. This is a problem with a lot of action RPGs. Or say you're at level 15 and craft a super duper weapon. Well, if you just keep playing, you're probably going to find an average weapon at level 20 that outperforms your super duper weapon at level 15. So rather than spend your time crafting, it pays off more to just play the game and take what it gives you and you come out ahead. At least that's been the case for me in other games like this. And once we get past the streets, we get more streets. But we also get a sort of unique area. It's still the streets, but has an opening meant to represent Piccadilly Circus. I've never been to the real one, but this is a little different than the usual procedurally generated grayness. Also, we have a bookstore. That's new. I'm hungry for any scraps of something I haven't seen already. Hell Rift, is this gonna be what? Yep. It's exactly the same as the others. <sighs> Well, there's a bone arch in the center. I guess that's new. Oh, a portal within a portal. Now you're speaking my language. Oh, -ho, this is new. Now we're in painkiller hell temple territory. I approve. And big demons. Now we're getting somewhere. You had me worried there for a minute, Hellgate. Good, I feel like I'm getting my hell fix again. This is still a pretty simple level, and like the others, it just sort of ends. But I feel like I'm seeing things. I mean, what's the point of going to hell if you don't see anything? And clearing out this temple and the hell rift takes me so long that by the time I get back, Piccadilly Circus has already respawned enemies. Ah, that's my signal. Time to go. Back at base, we get a major plot point. For this game, anyway. I need to summon the Oracle to learn the truth. Yeah, you remember the truth? The fabled and near incomprehensible voice of truth. Well, the leader sends me to a crazy hobo who knows all about the Oracle when he's not crazy, and we start this long, long chain of dialogue where he says something kooky, does something abusive to his assistant, who just takes it, but verbally protests. Oh, where's my hammer I used to hit you in the face? Oh, gee, I accidentally destroyed it. It's a weak joke that gets replayed over a series of hours, maybe 20 times total. It's awful. See, this is another flavor of the bad writing. A crazy hobo trying to kill you, sure, that's funny. A crazy hobo trying to kill you over and over, and each time all you do is say, oh, I wish he would stop doing that, how I hate him, and will attempt to make some sly remark that expresses this. That's not funny. That's unnatural and staged. It's the sort of thing I would expect from a middle schooler who doesn't know anything, but they're trying anyway. So please game, please give me this joke over and over and over. Uh, well, thank God I have exotic levels to keep me going. Like the sewers. 
and a new mini hub set inside the sewers, which connects to, you got it, more sewers. Why? Well, at least we have a hell rift exactly like all the others. And some more streets, even though they're dark this time. I guess that is a little different. Another hell rift. Oh god, this is getting to me. Well, thankfully, the game gives me something to take my mind off of that, which is my fire elementals are not keeping up with the game. Even a little bit. See, my demon dog or whatever gets stronger and has some abilities to buff him, make him tougher, he's holding his own. But these fire elementals are snapping like twigs. I can barely keep them alive before I have to re-summon them again, and there are no abilities to make them stronger. I can burn a whole skill point to make them do 5% more damage. Well, you can't do much damage if you're dead. I can sacrifice my own health to restore minions. Well, that might be useful if I knew if they were low. Plus, their health pool is next to nothing as it is. Enemies are one-shotting them. Okay, I've hit level 10, and that's a big deal because it unlocks more skills. But I'm desperate for help, so if I choose the wrong one, I might be screwed. Well, I did a cheat here and backed up my save file so I could experiment with new skills. Let's try the Witch Doctor. He's supposed to heal my minions. That's what I need. He's not healing them enough. This is bad. Plus, he replaces my Demon Dog minion and doesn't do any damage himself. So that means all those points I dumped into him were worthless if I go with the Witch Doctor. If I was going to do that, I should have gone all in on the elementals. But it's too late now. And even then, it might not work. At least the demon dog works. Yeah, I checked. There's no way to respec your skills either. You either do it the right way or you're screwed and throw out what? Six hours of gameplay? Oopsies. Except you don't know what the right way is. I still don't. This shit is just evil. Well, I reloaded my backed up save and went with the spectral elemental. It's not great, but it's another minion and it lasts longer than the fire elementals. Not that that means much. Back off the street, it's into the subways again. No. Oh. But now the subways are dark. Who needs new levels when you can just make things dark instead? Well, the game decides that's so good, it gives me a second portion. Okay, this monster does look pretty rad. Yeah, the monsters are staying fresh, but the levels, my god. Oh, and did I say my fire elementals are fragile like twigs? No, excuse me, they're paper now. They're little paper figurines, like that guy was dropping in Blade Runner. If you step on them, they die. If an enemy sneezes, they die. If I turn to look at something, they die. That's all they do. I guess they do some damage in their three second lifespan, but these are becoming worthless. I prioritized any armor that makes my minions stronger, even if it makes me weaker. But that's not cutting it. I think this might have been a trap. Why do this to me, designers? Why? The park! Sweet mercy, a new level! It took so long to get here, but we're seeing something new! I mean, it's kind of a basic park, but it's something different! Yeah, here we're still doing this stupid quest line with the Oracle where the crazy guy assembled the demon to rape his assistant's face and now he wants to burn him alive in a pit of fire. The assistant finally gets scared and runs away, so we have to chase him so we can bring him back to be tortured. Yeah, real hero stuff. Oh, something I wanted to add from earlier? Even though the Kill 10 Zombies quests are lame, that doesn't mean the opposite is good either. I will take Kill 10 Zombies any day over annoyingly complex quests that break the flow of the game. Where you have to find a specific brick, wait one minute for the ghost to appear, then look up online what you're supposed to say to him. So a complex quest isn't inherently good. It's all about context and motivation. Ironically, the last episode is doing a better job of that. Huh. I'm in a chocolate fog. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed the park, because from here it's more sewers. The same Hell Rift. The same Hell Rift Temple. Ooh, a secret area. That leads to a sewer level. But it's a small sewer level. What is this game doing? This led to a thought that was building of, okay, I should stop trying to play this like a normal game and start speedrunning it. The game is giving me every incentive to skip through the levels, because I've already seen them! I've already seen everything! Nope. 
That didn't work. There's no shortcuts to be had. More streets, more streets, and more streets. The streets are the best part, but I've seen them. This is Hellgate London. Why not have more London locales? This really makes me think about procedural generation of levels. I think it's good as a crutch, but this is just abuse. I think procedural generation is best for situations where you want to peek around the corner of an area you already like. So if there's a level I love and I'm dying to see more, sure, give me some procedural generation. I think it's best used as a topping. But this is the main course and it's not a good taste. That said, AI is getting better and better. So I hope procedurally generated areas feeling stale because you recognize all the patterns goes away in the future, but for now, it's here. Well, we do get a new zone, a giant quarry, which, I mean, this is so-so, but it is something different. I'm gasping for air here. More streets, more streets, and oh my god, are my fire elementals worthless. Okay, now this is different, sort of. We reach our destination and they give you a tactics minigame. Though calling this tactics is generous. You don't have individual control over the players, you just give general instructions. Well, it goes okay at first, but then I have to hold a position, then BAM! Look at that, dead. Yeah, now everybody's dead. Try again. Similar story. They can't stop the exploders in time, dead. I have unlimited troops though. I tried damaging the boss, but it's not even close. He calls in never ending reinforcements and we die and die and die. I try running past him, doesn't help. Apparently you're supposed to kill the main boss. Fine, focus fire. Okay, that did something, now do it again. And again. Yeah, this seems to be what you're supposed to do. Send wave after wave at him. Now, I'm no stranger to strategy games that require heavy casualties on your part, but even in those, you do it in a smart way. 20 soldiers all at once do a lot more damage than 5 waves of 4 each. I finally get them, but it's not satisfying. We sacrifice men for nothing. Well, the plotline has finally come to a boil, and even though the crazy guy has raped and tortured the assistant, he's still human. So we have to enter a portal inside his brain to destroy his identity. Wow, that's a cool portal effect. At first, I'm so happy for a change of scenery. But then I realize it's the same thing. It's just a tunnel, then a fork. A tunnel, then a fork. Tunnel, then a fork. Why? Well, I finally find this guy's identity. First, I have to destroy his psyche. Then his id, ego, and superego. Just to be sure we really erase his identity. Then it's this thing again. Draw from them. More nonsense talk. Oh good, I'm on page two now. This is worthless. It's all worthless. The story guy says he doesn't know what they're doing. No, get me out of here. It's the subway again. How is this happening? I'm just going to run. Try and run through them. Oh yeah, run. Okay, this is sort of working, but no, they got me. Let me try again. I think running is faster, but they're good at blocking me. I'm starting to panic, I'm never gonna get out of here. No. More subway, more subway, more subway. It just doesn't end. It's the subway. Okay, this is different, sort of. This is a new zone, but look at what we're getting. It just looks like some empty storage warehouse. This is what passes for something new now. I'm in hell. Oh, hey. Okay, a new hub. More bullshit dialogue. We're going. How about some maintenance tunnels? You haven't seen those, have you? What about the other path? Oh my god, it's the same thing. They're just dark maintenance tunnels. My fire elementals are beyond useless. No, I think I know the problem. At level 15, I get to access force elementals, which supposedly have more hit points. But I need those so badly now. But I think the real problem is this zone is for level 16 and I'm under level. Despite grinding through everything except that last subway, I'm still under level. So that can only mean the game wants me to go back and grind even more through those levels that have repeated 10 times already. I'm in hell. This is hell. Oh no. What am I, what am I gonna do? 
Oh, what's the matter, Ross? You don't like hell? You said you wanted to see hell, didn't you? You see, it wasn't enough to simply see hell. No, you needed to experience it. You needed to go deeper, and deeper still, until you were finally here. Now you understand. You understand that these levels are just going to repeat forever. You understand that your minions are going to become infinitely weaker. You understand the false hope of better gear. You understand that your only companions to provide you comfort are these mannequin-looking fuckers that say things like you would expect from an AI. Welcome to hell. Okay, okay, I have an idea. I need to embrace the dark side. I found a trainer for the game, but it doesn't work with the 64-bit copy like I've been playing. But I can install the 32-bit copy on a virtual machine, copy over the files, then it should work with the 32-bit copy. If there was ever a game that deserved cheating, it's this one. Oh no, you're going to cheat? How can I stop you now? Alright, running the cheat. Traitor activated. The invincibility cheat works, but it doesn't work on my minions. It also causes a weird effect where it shows all enemies as having full health. But they really do lose health, you just can't see it until they're dead. The experience cheat does not work. I'm still gonna have to grind. Uh-oh, what's a summoner to do with no minions? Okay, plan B. Time to dust off Dante. Here's my marksman. I originally stopped playing him because my weapons were getting weaker and weaker, and every enemy felt like I was chopping down a tree. Oh wow, I stopped here with him too? That's a bad sign. Let's see how he does with the cheat. Dante, you're up. Oh no. It's working, but look at how long it takes to destroy the enemies. And this was with the best weapon I could find. If I go invincible, I'm just getting mobbed in the dark. I'm never gonna make it. What's the matter, Ross? Having some trouble? You think you're the first person to try and cheat hell? Yeah, take that monster. Don't worry, you'll kill him. Eventually. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying Hellgate London. It's not so often we get visitors. And now that you're here, there's no leaving. You're going to stay here. Forever. You're doomed, Ross. Doomed. <laughs> well, that's a good jumping off point. Yeah, this episode took an unexpected turn for me, since it turns out I may be trapped in hell forever. I wasn't ready for that. This is going to take me some time to figure out. So, uh... Awards time! First award! Can you guess it? You can guess it. Does it respect your time? I played this game five years ago, and I knew coming back was going to be tedious, but I thought maybe I picked the wrong class or wasn't bringing my A game. I thought I could just power through it with minions for the video and see what was at the end. I didn't realize how severely I underestimated what I was going up against. Second award. What to love? Can't. This is sort of the opposite of the Sonic episode, where in that one, I didn't have the hate. In this one, I don't have the love. This type of game gets under my skin more than any other. The potential's there. I was liking the first impressions of the hell-torn streets, the weird hell ecosystem, the first hell rift and temple, what I didn't realize was those were glimpses of light in the darkness. Those moments with a colorful bulb on the end of an anglerfish waiting to swallow me. If I didn't get so weak, I might have stuck with it. It was actually fun for about an hour or two, but then it really eases you into the pain and it doesn't stop. It's just a solid, gradual slope downward. I really wanted to see what was at the end, but the game was forcing me to face what I was willing to sacrifice to achieve that. At some point, my self-preservation instincts kick in. In fact, to show you how much it's not worth it, I made a map showing the areas that the game repeats versus unique ones. I only made it a third of the way, but look at that ratio! I'm sure it can get worse than this, but this may be the most padding I've ever seen for a big budget title. What were they trying to do to people? As a kid, you more or less accept what games hand to you. As an adult, you've seen more, so bad games start making you question what a game is asking of you versus what it's delivering. Hellgate London failed that ratio so spectacularly for me, yet I still wanted to make it work. Which brings me to the final award. Actually is hell. 
What I didn't realize until the very end is this game may have a hidden or simply accidental genius to it. Out of all the games in hell that I've played, this is the only one that's actually given me the experience of hell. Why, thank you. The Sisyphean tunnels, the increasing helplessness of my character, the god-awful NPCs, and teasing you with something new and interesting in the smallest of quantities. Even the credits have this flickering light which drives me crazy to look at. And even now, abandoning this game bothers me. But some knowledge isn't worth the price. Like that guy in The Vanishing trying to find his missing wife and wanting to know what happened to her, only to find out that some psycho buried her alive? Yeah, that wasn't worth the cost of finding out. This game is the exact same thing. I simultaneously want to see the rest of it and never want to look at it again. It's one of the most evil games I've played. I feel like I've left a small part of my soul behind in this game. Yeah, it's you. I don't regret playing this. Well, not completely. After all, it's not every day you get to see the face of true evil. But I've seen enough. I only have so much time on Earth, whereas I have all of eternity to explore hell. Gotta do some time management here. And that's the Halloween episode. Wow, this one was a journey for me. I hope most of you only watched this one. Stay tuned for the Halloween, wait, no, the post-Halloween episode. Yeah, I had something planned for that. It's the one about the medieval detective who kills himself to solve crimes. You know the game I'm talking about. Oh yeah, that one. Wait, it's not as bad as I thought. I did it after all. I found the source of all evil. I just needed to click on it. There, it's done. It's over. <laughs>